I think it was on Dave's shirt. What did it say? How good. How good is that? Baptisms. Does anyone else want to get baptised this morning? No. Water's there. No day better than today. Maybe next week. See if we can get three weeks in a row. How good would that be? It's just so encouraging, isn't it? See our young fellows standing up for Jesus like that. It uh, just brings a tear to my eye, actually. <laughs> it's good. Now, um, I want to say th- uh, a good morning. And today is Give Thanks Sunday. So uh, we're going to celebrate that in a minute. We've got so much to cover. What I want you to keep in mind is that Krispy Kremes will be available after the service. So it might be a bit of a long haul today, but uh, it's just so many great things this morning and uh, we've got a bit to get through, but it's going to be good. Now, before we we jump into uh, our series and the things that we are going to be looking at today, I just wanted to acknowledge something that's sad that's happened over the last couple of days. Now, I'm not sure if Margaret is here this morning, Margaret Bardsley, but uh, many of our, many friends of this particular family are here at live streams and so I just wanted to uh, just just say that we're praying for Lee Sardi. Lee Sardi and uh, Lee Sardi Jana, his wife passed away a couple of days ago uh, after a battle with cancer. Now Lee Sardi was a part of our church for a long period of time, married an American girl Jana and they moved over into to the US. So uh, many of you probably don't know Lee and the Sadi family, but there's a, a whole heap of us that do. And I just want to say that we're standing with them as a family and also with Margaret and John and family that are here in Perth. So just wanted to acknowledge that this morning. Um, and it is very sad. So today, today we will be continuing our series, uh, Bless it's uh, five simple, everyday ways that we can help people find and follow Jesus. And uh, we'll be looking at the first S today in the acronym BLESS, which stands for? Serve. Serve. Perfect. You guys are doing really well. And just again, quickly an acknowledgement, uh, based this series and our, our evangelism strategy or framework is based on this book called Bless by Dave and John Ferguson. So a lot of what I'm going to say, a lot of the thoughts have been shaped by uh, a lot of the hard work that these guys have done. So I wanted to uh, just acknowledge that again. But before we get into the message, I want to take some time to celebrate and thank God for 75 years of his story, his story and witness here in the city of South Perth and beyond. This week, the church turned 75 years young. And we're going to celebrate after the service with our tradition of Krispy Kreme. And uh, just so that you know, for all those GF people out there, there will be GF ones as well, gluten-free donuts. And uh, I remember last year, I think it was Scotty, Scotty Gaunson came up to me and he just went, Krispy Kremes, they are good. And so I reckon that's the sentiment of many people here on a, on, uh, for our birthday, so we're going to celebrate with some crispy creeps a little bit later on. We also want to celebrate that live streams, uh, Karawara turned 10 today. So can we celebrate that? 10. It's pretty awesome. Under the leadership of Darren and Mel and also some wonderfully faithful uh, human beings, men and women, uh, they continue to love and support and, and just reach out to that uh, to, the, to the suburb of Karawara. They do a fantastic job. And I want them to know that we continue to love, bless and support them and cheer for them. We also want to celebrate the rebirth of Livestream's uh, Bull Creek. Livestream's Bull Creek is now a one-year-old. So that's worth celebrating. One year old. How, however, we also want to uh, honour and celebrate its previous history, Bull Creek Church, was birthed back in October 1976. And I think I sort of overlooked this, but they were rebirthed in their 50th year. So they're technically 51 years old. Is that right? 676? No, they're not. They're 40. Oh, I can't even do sums, man. Oh, why did, why did I think that? Anyway, 
They're nearly 50. And they were, they were reborn nearly 50. So, yeah, that's cool, hey. Uh, I often speak to people who have been at Bull Creek that are way better at mass than me. Um, and they are just so thankful, so thankful for uh, South Perth's love, their commitment, their sacrifice, and it's given them new life and it's given them a new momentum moving forward. One bloke said to me on Tuesday, he said, without it, we were in trouble. So thank God and thank you for your prayers and for your commitment to being a blessing to Karawara, to Bull Creek and to the broader Life Streams family, even those that are beyond our borders. We are a church of kingdom influence. Amen? Amen. And uh, during the week, I asked some of our shepherds, what do you love about the church? And here are some of their responses. I love that Jesus is at the centre and how Jesus loves is demonstrated in and through its people. The community is so supportive and encouraging. This church has a heart for Jesus and serving the leaders are about equipping the saints to do the work of Jesus and they fan the flame beautifully. That's what Brooke said. I love uh, the love and the support from this church, the support and prayer I've experienced and what I see and hear about. Uh, talking at a lunch today before I read this request, two ladies were saying the same. I often hear in the cafe how friendly it is. I love the community outreach and the beyond outreach. This is where God put me. And he chose well, and that was from our shepherd, Jeanette. From Donna, she said, I love the focus on outreach, local and afar, discipleship and prayer. Di said, I love the Holy Spirit lives in our church. That's good, isn't it? The teachings are biblical. The leadership lead from the front and from behind, and that love is alive in our church. Uh, Bron said, I love that our church is across all the generations. You know what? I love that as well. So many new people who come through the door go, wow, you've got all our young people, you know, and right through to the elderly, which is just, I think that's so healthy, so healthy. Young and old and everyone in between, that it's based on the word of God and that it's actively pursues and encourages us all to be more Christ-like, that, uh, that we are in together, in this together, and don't walk this path alone, supported in prayer and so many other ways. Bronwyn said that. And then this from Patrick and Polly. The outward focus of global and local outre- outreach is something we always are proud of. The upward focus, caring of, individual, of individuals, spiritual health and growth. In Soul Care Conference, some friends from other churches highly comment on this ministry. People from multiple cultures Worshipping together, isn't that amazing too? And fellowship in harmony, a taste of what it's going to be like in eternity. So good. So encouraging. This is an awesome church and it's an absolute privilege to be a part of it. And I wonder whether today on our 75th birthday, you might just be able to reflect and go, thank you God. Thank you God for bringing me to this place and to this space. You know, without this church... Uh, I'm not even going to give you any numbers because I'll probably get them wrong, but um, the reality is without this church, I don't know where I'd be. You know, this church has radically changed my life and, thank, and, and I thank, thank everybody who was a part of it, but also thank um, God that Jesus is alive in this place. Now, I want to take a moment to acknowledge, bless and thank God for everyone who serves in the life of our church. You are the heart and the soul of this place. You might have heard me say that a number of times. It's true. So if you're one of these people, can you please stand up? Uh, One of our servant leaders, one of our shepherds, one of our staff members. Uh, you're You're a kids, a youth or a young adult leader. Please stand up. Uh, If you're on the worship team or the tech team, can you please stand up? Thank you. Uh, if you are on the welcome team, you lead a small group, you serve in our live streams community services, anywhere in our live streams community services, our cafe, our childcare, maybe you lead mum's club, uh, craft, open house, maybe you serve in the shed, maybe you visit and make meals for people. Everyone who serves in the life of the church, can you please stand up? 
We want to honour you. We want to love you. We want to say thank you so much for what you do in the life of the church, for your service to God and to the broader community. Thank you so much. Can we, as a church, just honour everybody who serves in our church? And I'm... Thank you. Can you stay standing, please? We're gonna, I'm going to just ask Dave to come and pray a blessing over all of our servants in this place. And if you're close by, you want to put a hand on someone or reach out a hand, that would be a fantastic. Let's just do that. Let's pray. Yeah, I better not uh, mention any names. I can probably get them on. <laughs> Our church is Life Streams Christian Church. Father, we thank you for the fact that you encourage us to travel freely and lightly. And Father, as uh, Rod shared, there's been a fair bit of impact on his life. There's been a lot of impact on my life and I know on everyone else's lives here. Yeah. And Father, I want to thank you for the, the people who are standing here. And they represent many over the last 75 years who have poured their life into this place. Not just into a, a building or into a uh, group of people, but into your kingdom. And Father, we thank you for that. We pray a rich blessing on everyone who's uh, gone before. We thank you for their commitment, their sacrifice and their perseverance. And Father, I want to pray for each person standing here today. I thank you for them. I thank you for the the fact that they've poured their lives into other people. They've been used by you for the extension of your kingdom here and beyond our walls and indeed over to the out, out of countries of the world. Father, I pray that you just pour your life into them ongoingly. And Father, I pray you'd call us on to continue to make a significant impact for your kingdom. Father, so I pray a rich blessing on them. I pray that uh, you, the God of hope, would fill every one of us with joy and peace, so that we can overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May we keep trusting you to do that. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we thank our servants, our people who serve in the life of the church? Thank you so much. Now, make sure you all grab a Krispy Kreme afterwards and are blessed by a Krispy Kreme. Now, Dave Robartson, I need Dave to come up. Dave's one of our legends in this place. We've been trying during this... Yeah, let's give Dave a hand. <laughs> Throughout our series, we've been trying to bring people up uh, on, the, on the platform who are normal, everyday live streams. <laughs> normal, everyday live streams people, but are legends at what they do. Can you please let me finish? <laughs> and um, Frank, Dave Robartson is uh, one of those legends, and so I just wanted to do a real quick interview with him. Mate, where are you involved in the life of the church, and how do you uh, serve also uh, outside of these walls? Yeah, well, I'm a shepherding elder, which I, I love doing because I get to pray for people, and, and I, that's, a, that's a privilege and, and a real joy. Um, and I help out with a men's ministry, uh, the Valiant Man and Man Space, and Sundays doing operations here. I'm sort of running around everywhere, <laughs> which I love doing. It's good. Yeah. What about outside, mate? We, we appreciate everything you do in here, but we also have a, have a huge focus outside as well. So. Sure. Yeah. Um, look, I don't do a lot outside of the church. Um, I've got a wood-fired oven. I love firing up and blessing people and, and cooking uh, pizzas, but... Outside, I've got work, obviously, and I've got quite a few teams of uh, young lads of different ages, and yep. yeah, they bring some challenges, and uh, they're guys of the world, so um, some of the stuff they do and get up to is pretty interesting, and so there's always a demand there where I can, I pray for them, and yeah, get opportunity to invest in them, yep. so yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, one time we were, we were out, I think we were walking our dogs, and you were on the phone basically the whole walk, talking to one of your guys. <laughs> And, you know, it was, just, it was a real privilege to be a fly on the wall just listening to you, ministering to this guy. It's fantastic. Um, why do you serve, mate? What do you love about serving? What do I love? Well, I love serving because often I get blessed more than the people I'm serving. Or that's what I feel and that's what I experience, which I think is amazing. But one of the main reasons I do it is because I love people. I love you guys and that's why I do it. So um, a lot of them people... A lot of people invested in me in my early days and I want to give back. So I think 
without investment, I wouldn't have found the Lord. Mm. And that's, that's just short of it. And we've heard that uh, example today from the lads. So um, I think that's, that's why I'm doing it. And that's why I love it. Um, look, I've spent a bit of time in um, sports chaplaincy. But um, over those years, I did level two training, but nothing's actually came. I never ended up at a club. And um, doing uh, the Holy Spirit retreat a few years ago, um, we got a time to, you often get out and you reflect and you spend time with the Lord. And I really just sensed that the uh, Holy Spirit was saying, I've got your plans here. What are you, what are you searching for? Your mission field's right here. Mm. And so um, I realised that. And so I just sensed the words, um, the prompting of the Spirit saying, we've got work to do. And so that's my time here and it's not complete. Mm. So. Good, mate. What, do you, what, what discourages you about serving? Oh, not a lot, but I, I do get a bit disappointed when I'm seeing the same people do it all over, all, all the time. It'd be great if we could get more people involved. Mm. Yeah, all play our part. Yeah. Uh, do you ever think uh, that serving is a waste of time? No, 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 no. No, it's not, not a waste of time. And I'm, a massive, I'm not a massive evangelist, but my gifts of serving uh, means that I can help people come and find and follow Jesus. And that's my role and that's my part. So I come to, I've been coming to this church for a bit since I was about 16, 17. And, and being involved, whether it's um, with youth group or what, but if it means that people get to know Jesus, uh, that's what I want. It could be in kids' ministry or youth, where you might even find your wife. So it's, it's worth coming. <laughs> Uh, what do you do to stop yourself from uh, growing weary or being discouraged in doing good or serving? Yeah, this is a good one. Uh, I love to worship. I love to uh, worship and express my joy to the Lord and listen to his promptings. So uh, I love on a Sunday to, to uh, worship and, and out, of, out of the church, YouTubes and, and watch and listen to uh, worship and the other main key is to pray. I love to pray. We, we always pray before the service and we, we pray for uh, the prompting of people to come that don't know Jesus, that might walk in the door. And, and he blesses us. It happens so often. And so uh, it's a privilege. So by doing those two things, I stay energised. Yeah, it's good, mate. Good job. What uh, would you say to people who aren't serving or are thinking about maybe serving in the life of the church or even in the community, what would you say to them? Well, it's, it's fun. And you'll be blessed more than you think. So well, we always see uh, an end result, but investment takes time. Mm. So um, whether it's through the youth or, or an older person, it takes time. You know, we had the youth group at our place for a progressive dinner a couple of weeks ago. And it was just a privilege. All I did was cook and ate my house. But I don't know where that'll go, but it's an investment and mm. we, we allow the Lord to use it. Yeah, that's good, mate. We do what we can and let him do what he does best. Can we thank David? He's, uh, <clears throat> one, of our, one of our legends in our community and we thank you for your service, mate. We honour you today. Now... I want to I want to uh, spend a little bit of time, just a few moments, looking at where Jesus sees service fitting into His kingdom. Where does Jesus see service fitting into the kingdom of God? Now, Dave Ferguson in in this book that I said earlier, he says this: Jesus knew His position and His power. He knew that God had put all things under His authority, and yet, what did He do? I would say that He set aside a crown an apron it's a good metaphor you know the one who sat in the highest position the king of kings and the lord of lords uh, it says in philippians 2 who being in the very nature god did not consider equality with god something to be used to his own advantage rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a what servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. But before this ultimate act of service and sacrifice, 
Before he exchanged a crown for a cross, we read of a very, very intimate and profoundly powerful kingdom moment with his disciples in John 13. Why don't you come with me as we have a look at this passage and we'll start in verse 2. John 13. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, he took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist, it's the apron. And after that, he poured water into the basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Now, just a couple of comments really quickly about this. Foot washing was a common practice of the day before eating a meal. And it was actually or usually done by the lowest ranking servant in the house. It would have been a pretty ordinary job. Keep in mind that there were no Air Maxes in that day, no socks, no pedicures, just open sandals. Whenever I see those Birkenstocks, I think, you know, they're like Jesus' sandals. <laughs> Their feet would have been sweaty, dusty, extremely dirty. And it's highly likely that those feet stood in lots of animal excrement as they walked the streets going from town to town. Their feet, put simply, would have been gross. They would have been disgusting. Now, for some reason, there was no foot washing servant present in this meal or at this meal. And I like to think, this is not biblical, sometimes I think outside of the narrative a bit, but I, I like to think that Jesus said to the servant on the way in, you have the night off tonight, mate. I, I, I like to think that Jesus might have said, I'll take care of it for you tonight. What a blessing that would have been to the servant. And Jesus assumes one of the lowest of low roles in that society in that day, a servant, and he washes the feet of his disciples. He removes his crown, and what does he put on? An apron. Then in verse 6 it says, He came to Simon Peter and he said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You do not realise now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. And then what does Peter say? No, you shall never wash my feet. Do you know, I identify with Peter there. Who identifies with Peter there? You know, I think it's a perfectly normal response. Jesus, I feel uncomfortable and I feel embarrassed about this. You shouldn't be doing this. You are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords. However, Peter clearly didn't fully understand what Jesus was actually doing. Because as Dave Ferguson says, he says, in just a few hours, Jesus would choose to be stripped and humiliated. His crown would be again, be set aside, but not for an apron, this time for a cross. He would take on the full weight of our sins and wash us once and for all with his grace so that we could be clean forever and restored to a right relationship with God. Now on that, I would like us to take a few moments now to reflect and remember his love, his sacrifice, his service for each and every one of us. And let's eat and drink in remembrance of what our King has done. Let's do that together now.
Thank you, Jesus, for setting aside your crown for the cross. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your sacrifice. And we thank you for your service. Thank you so much, Jesus. Amen. Church, you need, to, you need to get what's going on here. This was, just, just, this was not just a nice thing that Jesus did for his mates at, uh, just at one of the simple meals. This was a stake in the sand moment, a kingdom culture defining moment. The moment when a king declares to his people... This is what we are going to be known for. This is what the kingdom of God is going to be like. That's what Jesus is doing here. Verse 12, he says this, it says this, When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and he returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asks that same question of us today. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be what? blessed if you do them the king in this moment declares that his kingdom the kingdom of god god will be will be built on this thing called service i've given you an example now it's your turn to set aside a crown to set aside your crown whatever that might represent in your life set it aside and Pick up and put on an apron. Who's in? But how? How do we do it? What does it look like? What specific things can we learn from Jesus who served those around him? Now, I want to take you to the passage in Mark chapter 7, verse 31. A fantastic story here. It says, then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and then went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. And after he took him aside away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. This is quite radical, isn't it? And then he spit and touched the man's tongue. Would have gone well in COVID. (laughs) He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him that word. I think it's ephatha. ephatha. Not really good at those words, but at this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosed, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. You know, this story offers, I believe, just three really specific yet simple lessons from Jesus about how we can serve others. I call it the three P's. The three P's of service. Let's have a look at them. He served in, the first P, proximity. Who did Jesus serve? He served those who were in front of him. And he did it as he went. As he went. So, (laughs) so often we want something big, don't we? So often we want to maybe go overseas and serve some people overseas and yet most of the time it's simply about as you go, serve the people in front of you. 
proximity. Serve the people in front of you as you go. The next one is he served personally. I love this about Jesus. This is one of the reasons why I follow Jesus. He, this is incredible. Did you notice what Jesus did when he met this man? He served him personally. In verse 33, it says that he took him aside. Why do you think he took him aside? Think about what was going on for this man and what was going on in his world. The scriptures say that he was deaf and he, had, he could hardly talk or he had a speech impediment. Imagine how hard life would have been for this fella. Maybe a little bit of bullying, maybe a, oh, he's got no voice so he doesn't have a voice at all, let's just push him aside. All sorts of things going on for this fella, but Jesus pulls him aside, away from the crowd. Why do you think he did that? Well, he wanted to serve him with dignity and in a way that showed he understood his needs beyond the obvious ones. That's what I love about Jesus. The next thing is he served powerfully. So Jesus served in proximity, he served personally, And what does he do next? He serves powerfully. In verse 33, it says that Jesus looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. And at this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosed, and he began to speak plainly. That, my friends, is a powerful miracle. And when Jesus served He accessed the power of God. So often, don't we? Don't we serve in our own strength? Don't we so often serve with our own resources? And then we wonder why we burn out. And we forget that we we have access to the power of God. If you don't believe me, Take a look at what Jesus says about it here in John 14, verse 12. It's going to come up on the screen. It says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. I'd love you to spend some time reflecting on that powerful verse. So maybe next time, maybe next time when you're serving someone, and you know what? It all counts. It all counts. However we serve, it all counts. But maybe next time when you're serving someone, ask the Spirit to reveal maybe some ways that you might be able to powerfully pray for someone. Ask God to heal. Ask God to make whole. Ask God to deliver from addictions or oppression. Ask God... And access his power to maybe fix up a messed up relationship. If you are a disciple of Jesus, and you're here this morning, if you're a disciple of Jesus, you have access to the all-powerful God who can do the impossible in and through each and every one of us. we just got to tap into it. Amen? So how do we serve like Jesus? We do it in proximity, we do it personally, and we do it powerfully. So what? I always like to finish with the so what. As I land this message, what's the Spirit of God been saying to you? Let me ask a couple of questions. You might like to bow your head and your heart. I'm just going to ask these questions. Are you convinced of the importance of service in the kingdom of God. Are you convinced? This is what we have been called to do by the almighty, powerful God. What do you need to put down to bless someone through serving them? Maybe this week. What is your crown? Is it your time? Is it your pride? Is it your position? Is it your convenience? What is your crown? (coughs) 
What would it look like to put down your crown and put on an apron in your neighbourhood, in your community, in your church, in your workplace? What about your school or your university? What about in your home, your family, or even how might you serve your boss? It's our hope that as we intentionally take these steps of praying, listening, eating, that more and that, that will give us more and more opportunities to serve the people that God has placed in front of us. Hopefully serving them in a way that makes them see that our God is real, that our God is powerful, and that he has the power to radically transform people's lives. That's our heart and that's our prayer. Amen. Now, one last thing. There's a lot going on this morning, but one last thing. This morning we want to present to you uh, something that's really exciting, an opportunity that we have to serve our community together this Christmas. So I want you to have a look at this video and I pray that it will get you excited and it will get you on board. Let's have a look. Hey church, how good would it be to know that all the people around us have some food to eat and a special blessing for Christmas this year? As a church, we would love to bless those in need, those who've had a particularly hard year and who could do with a little lift through some Christmas cheer by receiving a special Christmas hamper. This year, Livestream's Christmas hampers are made with a difference. Community services and kids church are coming together to assemble our food hampers and we would also love you to be a part of this blessing. There are special decorations on the Christmas tree in the foyer where each decoration will have on the back the items that need to be bought. Each decoration will be no more than a cost of $10 to $15. The idea is that you come to the tree, select a decoration of your choice, head off to the shops, purchase the items written on the back and bring them back with your Christmas decoration as a donation to the Christmas hampers. If you would prefer to give financially towards the hampers, there are decorations with monetary amounts also. For those wanting a tax invoice, when you're donating, you must reference hamper and your full name. Any leftover money donations for the Christmas hamper will be put towards buying food hampers throughout the year for those in need. All items must be brought back and placed in a basket under the tree prior to the 11th of December. On Sunday the 11th of December, our kids, along with the volunteers, will play a part in helping put together our hampers. The hampers will be ready to give to our community by Thursday the 15th of December. So if you know of someone in your community that could be blessed with a hamper, please fill out a hamper request form. All forms must be returned to the church office before Sunday the 11th of December. Last but not least, please do not forget that you must pick up your requested hampers by Thursday the 15th of December and deliver these beautiful gifts to the people you've nominated on the forms in time for Christmas. Let's bless our community this Christmas.